Welcome. Today in this lecture, we are going to look at bond premium amortization using the effective interest rate method and also partial redemption of bonds before maturity date. So in this exercise, we are told that we have sold $400,000 12% bonds on June 1st, 2017. The bonds pay interest on December 1st and June 1st. The due date of the bonds is June 1st, 2021. The bonds yield 10%. On October 1st, 2018, the company buys back $120,000 worth of bonds for $126,000, including accrued interest. We've been asked to give all the journal entries through December 1st, 2019. We've been under instructions, we've been told prepare all the relevant journal entries from the time of sale until the time. Uh, the, until the date indicated, which is December 1st, 2019. We have been asked to use the effective interest rate method for discount or premium amortization. We'll have to find out what it is. And we've also been told that uh, we need to do the amortization of discount on interest dates and at year end, but no reversing entries are gonna be done. So our first job is to find out the bond issue price. So let's look for the relevant information to address that problem. So the relevant information we'll start with is, what's the face value of the bonds? That's $400,000. Next question is, what's the bond interest rate and what's the market interest rate? So we've been told the company sold $400,000 12% bonds. So that's the bond interest rate, 12%. We've also been told the bonds yield 10% which means that's a market interest rate. Now, are these bonds paying interest annually or semi-annually? The very second sentence says bonds are paid, on, the interest is paid on December 1st and June 1st, which then means that we have semi-annual interest payment. Okay, and in order to find out the present value of these bonds, the selling price, we need the life of the bonds. They were sold dated June 1st, 2017. The repayment date or maturity date is June 1st, 2021. That gives us a life of four years. So as the interest is paid semi-annually, we will need to make adjustments to these numbers over here, which I'm going to highlight. So what adjustments do we need to make? Life of the bond is four years, interest is paid twice, which means the number of times interest will be paid is eight times. Eight times the interest is gonna be paid. Each time the interest that's gonna be paid is going to be 6%, half of this 12%. When we calculate the present value, we are gonna use half the market rate, which is 5%. So for our purposes now, what's, in, what's relevant is bond interest rate, 6%, market interest rate, 5%, and the interest payments are eight times. That's what's relevant. So now that I have this information, I need to find out the bond issue price. So in step one, calculating the bond issue price, I need to find the present value of the principal, which is a $400,000. And I need to calculate the present value of the interest payments. So on $400,000, the company will pay 6%, a total of eight times. So 6% of 400,000 is 24,000. I will look up table 6.2 and 6.4, present value of a single sum and present value of an ordinary annuity. The interest rate I'm gonna look up is 5% and the number of periods is eight. Once I have that information from the table, the last step to get the bond issue price is 400,000 times a factor, 24,000 times a factor, I multiply and then I add up the numbers. This is now the bond issue price. This is how much cash I received at the time of sale. I asked for 400,000, I got 425,853.04. Obviously, if you look at this, the bond rate was 12% while the market rate was 10% at the time of issue. I was offering more than the market, which is why I was able to sell my bonds at a premium. Now I'm gonna take this information down to the next step, which would be my amortization schedule. 
So the carrying value is always the amount of cash you received. So the amount of cash I received in the schedule, the first date, the date of issue, June 1st, 2017, I'll write down the carrying value is the cash received. I will also do one journal entry immediately, and that's going to be for the issue of the bond since I have all the relevant information. So on June 1st, 2017, my journal entry is going to be cash debit. The amount of cash I received again is this 425,853.04. So you will see this number comes in over here into the table and into the journal entry. The liability in my books is the face value of the bonds, which is 400,000. The balancing figure is the premium. I issued it at a premium of 25,853.04. So that's in place over here. Before I proceed with my journal entries, I need to complete my amortization schedule. So I'll first do the amortization schedule for the full life of the bonds, the four years. So I have eight payments. So I write down the eight dates that I have the payments that are going to come up. And I'm going to write the first column. I can just copy and paste this number 24,000 all the way over here because that's not going to change. So let me put that information down over here. My 24,000. That's the interest rate that we had all the interest we had already calculated. 6% on 400,000 is 24,000. Okay. So how do I complete the amortization schedule? Very easy. I know my carrying value. So I will call this the previous carrying value, which means it's one line above. So the previous carrying value times the market interest rate will give me the interest expense. The difference between the cash paid and the interest expense is the amortization. And the last step over here in this row is going to be deciding whether I'm going to add or subtract the amortization. I'll show you two different ways in which you can do this, and we'll see how it plays into the journal entry. So my carrying value is 425,853.04. The amount I'm going to repay at the end of the life is face value 400,000. So I need to bring the number down to 400,000. So I need to subtract the amortization. Another way in which I could explain this over here, let's do the journal entry on December 1st, 2017. That's the line we're looking at over here. On this day, I have paid cash. So cash credit, that was known, 24,000. That's not going to change whether I'm using the effective interest rate method or the straight line method. I also know I have incurred an expense, so it's bond interest expense debit. The bond interest expense, we calculated that number as the bond interest, the market interest rate at the time of issue times the previous carrying value. If you look at this over here, the balancing figure is a debit, so it's bond premium debit. Also look at this previous journal entry. Bond premium is an adjunct account, it has a credit balance when I created it. In order to amortize it, I need to debit it. So you can look at this several different ways to decide that bond interest expense. When I calculate the amortization, it needs to be subtracted from the carrying value. Now, once I know how to do the first row of calculation, the rest of it is easy because it's gonna follow the same pattern. So the next interest payment date is June 1st, 2018. I take the previous carrying value, multiply it by 5% to come up with the next number. Difference between cash paid and interest expense is gonna give me the amortization. The amortization, I'm gonna subtract from carrying value and I'm gonna come up with the new carrying value. I do the exact same calculation for the remainder of the life of the bond. So I'm gonna highlight show the numbers over here, and you will see the ending number is gonna come as close as possible to the face value as we can get. You're gonna be off by a couple cents or maybe a dollar or two, and that's okay, it's the rounding off error that we have. In this case, I have a 28 cent rounding off error, but that's okay. So we've seen how to do the first two journal entries when we issue the uh, bonds and the first interest payment. Now, something to note over here, I issued the bonds on June 1st, uh, 2017. The first interest payment was on December 1st, 2017. 
this was within the calendar year, the fiscal year. So the journal entry was fairly straightforward. Now the company has a year end of December 31st. On December 31st, the next payment is not due as yet. If you see over here, we have June 1st, 2018 is the next payment. And I'm at December 31st, 2017. However, in order to prepare my books, I need to do an accrual journal entry. So what do I need to accrue? I need to accrue one month's interest expense, just for one month. So I'll essentially do this journal entry, but I will do it for one month, but I'm not paying cash today. So let's see what my accounts are going to be that I will debit and credit, bond interest expense debit. When I do that, I have to do the amortization and I'm gonna write bond interest payable credit because I'm not paying cash. Now this is only for one month, this journal entry. So let's take a look at the numbers where I'm gonna get these from. So I'm going to take the numbers that I have on this date. So I shall highlight it over here for you so you know what numbers I'm looking at. I'm going to take this number, the interest number that I have from June 1st, 2018. That is, if it's a total six months interest, this would the, the, the number would be 21,157.28. I will multiply that by one over six because I want only for one month. This is six months interest. I want just one month's interest. So I'm going to take only one month's interest over here. Same for the amortization. It's going to be only for one month. And again, the cash paid, the journal entry is gonna be only for one month. So really what we're looking at over here is all the numbers that you have on June 1st, 2018, I'm gonna do the journal entry on December 31st, 2017, but only for one month. Which then means on June 1st, on June 1st, 2018, when I do my journal entry, I will do the journal entry the interest expense is going to be for the remaining five months. So the amount that I had here for six months, one month was recognized here in the previous year. The remaining five are going to be recognized over here. The premium, same thing, only for one month. How much cash am I going to pay on this date? The bondholders don't care when I do my journal entries, whether I do accrual entries or not, they want to be paid the entire $24,000. So you will see over here in the journal entry, I have a deficit of four in the journal entry, and that 4,000 is really this interest payable from the previous journal entry. I'm just reversing that in order to take it off my books. Now, when you combine these two journal entries, Combine the interest expense, you will get the full six months number. Combine the bond premium amortization, you will get the full six months number. Combine the cash paid, well, there's only one cash paid, you'll get 24,000. Combine the bond interest expense, they'll cancel out each other. I had bond interest payable uh, credit and bond interest payable debit, they will cancel out each other. So essentially when I combine the two entries, I have just one set of numbers that were what we have here for June 1st, 2018. Now with that said, my next journal entry should be on December 1st, 2018. And that would come within the six months. The six months would come within the same year. However, we have a transaction that's happened on October 1st, 2018. And if you recall what happened on October 1st, 2018, the company bought back $120,000 worth of bonds they paid a total of 126. This included interest. So let's see how we're going to take care of that information now. So I'm going to start out over here to calculate the portion that was repaid early. The portion that was repaid early was 120,000. What was the total amount that I had? The total amount that I had is 400,000, which means after it has been repaid, I'll still have $280,000 of bonds payable in my books. So I'm gonna do a quick calculation over here. And the quick calculation I'm gonna do is very simple. What's the percentage? How much of the bonds am I reaping? So 120 divided by 400 is going to give me 30%. And 280 divided by 400 is gonna give me 70%. So it's basically saying, 
30% is repaid, 70% is still going to stay in my books. Now, I'm also going to bring down some numbers over here, and I'll tell you what numbers they are. Okay. So we are doing this on October 1st, 2018, repaying the bonds. On that date, I need to do an adjusting entry. I need to do two entries. Before I repay the bonds, I have to worry about the interest that has accrued. So what I'll do is the previous December, uh, June 1st, 2018, the carrying value that I had over there, I'm bringing it down here. I'm gonna split that 30, 70. So 30% of that number, I'm gonna take care of it on October 1st. The 70% is gonna stay with me. I'm gonna use it again. So we'll take care of this number later on. Right now my concern is this 30%. So I have, 120,000 worth of bonds that are gonna be repaid on October 1st. The carrying value on June 1st for those bonds is 126,090.89. Again, this number, I took the 420, the previous carrying value, the total amount, and I split that 3070. So what do I need to do with these numbers? On October 1st, I have to first pay interest on the bonds, that's on just the bonds that are being repaid. I have to repay the relevant interest. So what's my bond interest rate? I have to pay 6%, it's 12% for the year. How many months of interest do I need to pay? I paid interest on June 1st. That was the last time I paid interest. So October 1st is the next interest payment date. So let's see how I'm gonna calculate this interest. I have June, July, August, September, four months interest. So I'll pay cash, four months interest, and that's gonna work out to $480,000. So on the 120, I'm gonna calculate 6%, the bond interest rate, but only for four months. And I come up with $480,000. My bond interest expense, again, is gonna be the carrying value, previous carrying value, multiplied by market interest rate. Market interest rate is 5%, and it's gonna be only for the four months that I had it outstanding. And bond premium is gonna be the balancing figure. Now that I've paid the money for the interest, I can repay the bonds. So let me show you a couple calculations that we need to do here, but start with setting up the journal entry. I know I'm repaying the bonds, so bonds payable has to be debited. How much of it is being repaid? 120. That number was told to me. I'm settling this debt by paying cash. How much cash am I paying? Let's go back over here. I paid a total of 126. So let me write down that number, 126 over here. So this is the total cash paid on this date. How much of this applied to the interest? We did that in this previous journal entry, 4,800. So how much was paid for the bonds, the balancing amount? So cash paid is 121,200. Next question is, do I have any bond premium that's remaining in the account? And the answer is yes, I have some bond premium remaining and that needs to be amortized. I'm sorry, we're not amortizing it, we are closing down the account at this point of time, only for the portion that is being redeemed. So how do I come up with this number? Let's start out with what I had over here 6,090.89 minus what I amortized over here, that's the remaining portion. So again, the carrying value minus the face value, I shall write that down over here. That was the amount that was in the books for these bonds on June 1st. We amortized for four months, 596.97. So what remains with me 
is the unamortized portion that needs to now be closed down. So if you look at this number, that's where I got the number from. Again, let's review it. On October 1st, I'm paying off $120,000 worth of bonds. Before I pay the bonds, I have to pay them any interest that is due. Four months worth of interest has to be paid. The interest is only on the 120,000 and it's only for four months. So that works out to 4,800. I need to calculate bond interest expense. Bond interest expense will be calculated as a previous carrying value, again, relating only to that 30% times the market interest rate to give me this number. Balancing figure is the bond premium amortization. The very same day I'm paying off the bonds. So bonds payable is debit, 120,000. Cash is credit, and the cash credit, we did the calculation over here, of the 126 that was paid, if 4,800 related to the interest, cash paid for the bonds is 121,200. Bond premium that is not amortized as yet, that needs to be closed down. We did that calculation over here. So what we have finally over here in our books is going to be a gain on redemption. And this is a balancing figure. What we're looking at is a balancing figure, gain on redemption. So at this point of time, what is left in our books? The 280,000 is left in our books, as is this carrying value. So now I'm gonna set up a new schedule over here, starting out with the previous date again. Since these bonds are in the books, the 280,000, I'm starting out with this line, then I'm gonna say, I'm concerned with only 70% of it. So if you're looking to see where I came up with that 70%, it's 70% of the carrying value is what I'm concerned with. On the interest payment date, December 1st, cash paid, how much cash am I going to pay? Am I going to pay the full 24,000? No, I'm not going to pay that because I don't have 400,000 remaining outstanding. What I have outstanding is 280,000. So I can do the calculation in one of many ways. 280,000 times the 6% or I could do 24,000, the previous amount multiplied by 70%. We'll come up with the same answer. And what we have over here is 16,800. So either 280,000 times 6% or 24,000 times 70%, will give you the same number, how will you do the calculation. So that's the interest I'm gonna pay, and I can put those numbers down all the way through over here, that's a cash paid, because no other information has been given to me. I don't need to complete the entire schedule because I've not been asked for journal entries to go all the way through, but easy enough to do it in Excel. How will I calculate my interest expense? Previous carrying value times market interest rate, which is 5%, will give me 14,710.60. The difference between cash paid and interest expense is gonna be the amortization. I will subtract the amortization. Same thing is gonna continue the same pattern because I want it to come down to 280. Once I have this row completed, the same pattern is gonna follow all the way through. And you will see, I come down to 280,000.20, an extra 20 cents, that's a rounding off error and we're good with that. So on December 1st, 2018, my journal entry, I have my numbers over here. So let's take the numbers that I have over here and I can plug them in and you will see those numbers come into play over here. Bond interest expense debit, bond premium debit, cash credit. December 1st, I'm going to do an accrual journal entry only for one month. I don't pay cash. I credit bond interest payable. So I look at the second, the next line, what I will do on June 1st, 2019, if it was six months of interest, I take these numbers and I multiply by 150 each because I want only one month's worth of numbers. June 1st, 
I'm going to pay the entire six months interest and I'm going to close down that previous bond interest payable account that was a temporary account I'd created. I'm going to close it down over here. The full amount of cash is paid, which is the 18, 16,800. And finally, on December 1st, 2019, again, I'm doing an accrual entry for one month. So once this table is set up, doing the journal entries is relatively easy. Setting up the tables and identifying the relevant numbers are really the key in this problem. So hopefully with this, you'll be able to work with the numbers you are given in the homework problem on Wiley Plus. So good luck with that.